Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. The show has an NL East matchup. It's the Miami Marlins going up against the Atlanta Braves. John Shambi, Chris Singleton with you. And Singy, we're going to see a nice little win streak put to the test today. Yeah, these guys are really firing on all cylinders right now. And to me, the important thing is that they're doing the little things well. They're not just relying on home runs or big plays every game. They're playing good situational baseball, executing in key areas. And that's how you string together wins. So we'll see if they continue that in this one. So two down, and the batter now, Nick Fortes. Well, lots of pitches thrown in this first inning, and it's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. Out to short. Zips it to first. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. Two runs in the inning, but they strand three onto the bottom of the first. It's the Marlins two and the Braves nothing. King Tejada next up for the Braves. Right now with more RBIs than anyone in the National League. Great speed and great power. A great athlete, quite simply. Ripped, but it curls foul. When you have a real athletic player and who's able to do the baseball mechanical things really well, look out because the sky's the limit on that potential. Swung on, belted. Way back there. Pulls it in on the warning track. Man, I love that. Ready now for the fifth inning, and at the plate for Miami, Alex Kirilov. Alex Kirilov. Swing and a pop-up. Oh, you, you, you. And a quick out number one. Now batting. Second base. Labor. King Tejada next up for the Braves. He flied out to the warning track in his first trip. He is quite an athlete. I mean, you look around the other sports, basketball, football, you feel like he could thrive in one of those sports too. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. He'll circle the bases, and they close the gap. It's 3-2. a hanger and pitchers typically don't get away with making a mistake like that and right there he made him pay now in for the Braves King Tejada he's already homered in this game pretty amazing athlete this guy is power and speed quite a threat I mean you're talking about someone that could steal your bag and go deep Bo Jackson, anyone? And that one is lifted in the air. De La Cruz pulls it down, and he makes the catch. So now to the plate for Atlanta. King Tejada. He's already homered here in this one. Well, if he gets the save here, he's going to have earned it. Just getting through this hitter is going to be a challenge enough. Ground ball left side could be two. Slings to second, not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. I promise you, they're guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of it. Here is Ozzy Albies up to hit. One for three. Battling here as he fouls it away. Pickoff throw, and he's back in on a dive. Payoff pitch. Swing and a chopper. They get the force. Out number three. 
But a big turn of events here in the ninth as we are again all knotted up. Tenth inning coming up. All tied up at three apiece. So the batting order turns over. Brian De La Cruz will hit next. The left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. Grounder might be two. And that one handled. Fired to second. On to Olsen. That's two. Sometimes double plays get turned so quickly that you don't really get to appreciate all of the finer details and how these guys execute them. Right there, really nice footwork and a good feed to second was the key to pulling it off. And welcome back. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Now in for the Braves, King Tejada. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Kremer back to work. Swing and a high fly ball. That one out towards left center field. Way back there. And he brings it in on the warning track. Runner tagging for third. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play play. A 5-3 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chambi saying so long 